So I realized when I rewatched part one of building a power supply for Soundcraft Series 200B that I kind of glossed over some numbers or I went through them pretty fast and I didn't really explain. So when you have a power supply, it's able to give you a maximum amount of amps. And you kind of have to uh, build a power supply with that maximum amps in mind. And it starts with the transformer. How many amps max can the transformer give to you? And how many amps can the components in the, uh, in the, in the uh, power supply handle? Such as the diodes and, uh, and the voltage regulators and the bridge rectifier. So, when I was doing my research, I did, like I mentioned, I had the original um, Soundcraft power supply uh, schematic and it did have some parts listed on it. I couldn't figure out what the transformer was that they used, but they did have a bridge rectifier listed that was 2.5 amps. And also the there's two uh, uh, voltage regulators <clears throat> and for uh, the plus minus 17 rails and each of those are rated for 1.5 uh, amps and also there's a slow blow uh, mains fuse that is rated for 3.3 amps so putting all those together it sounds like if the bridge rectifier is 2.5 amps the console shouldn't draw more than 2.5 amps and you know the the rectifiers being 1.5 so each of those you know well together there would be 3 amps and so that's why I was kind of coming up with the numbers that I that I was and again uh, when I emailed someone it was actually uh, uh, the JLM, JML audio uh, person Joe he mentioned uh, that uh, it would probably be you know a little more than that and I think that's just a maximum that we're talking about so if I overbuild it just may not use that much just ends up being more expensive parts well the the transformer would probably be the only more expensive part the bridge rectifiers are really not very expensive uh, but then I have to take into account uh, cooling uh, there, there I have to heat sink uh, the uh, the voltage regulators so but in all of his website I think he just mentions using the, the chassis as a heat sink so maybe that's what I'm gonna have to try I also have an old computer power supply that I took apart that has some heat sinks in there that I might be able to reuse as well uh, and worst comes to worst maybe I can stick a, uh, a fan into the chassis I do have like I said I have extra rails so maybe I can hook up a, a 12 volt uh, fan um, all right well ah, something else that I was thinking about also so I have this uh, Jameco PCB power supply and this Radio Shack transformer and uh, it's it's a 24 volt transformer it's uh, it's 24 volt transformer secondary with a, a center tap so when I said it's 12 volt it's really uh, it gives me a plus it'll end up giving me plus 12 and minus 12 I guess I don't know if that's the right way to explain it but uh or two times 12, I guess is, is uh, the better way to explain it. Two times 12, um, and it's two amps. So instead of trying to use this power supply on the on the Soundcraft, what I'm thinking is once I have the uh, JLM Audio PCB uh, built, I'll use I can use this uh, transformer just to test this and see if it works properly uh, it, it won't it won't give me two amps is again not enough but it will it will allow me to make sure that all the rails are working as as intended so one thing to note about about this uh, this PCB it has uh, a doubler and a tripler so when you get your 48 volts for the phantom power you want to uh, set this depending on uh, on how many volts uh, your uh, transformer is so I think if you're up to 18 volts you have to have the tripler and if you have like 22 and above uh, you use the doubler so 
and I guess uh, having the 20, having 20 volts is kind of in between, and, and it didn't really seem like he recommended using a 20 volt transformer, two times 20. I guess one, one thing I should make clear is when I'm talking about these voltages on the transformer, I'm really talking about uh, two times. Um, so, but I'm gonna ultimately go for, I believe I'm gonna go for an 18 volt, two times 18 volt transformer. So I'm gonna use the tripler, which I already put the, uh, the jumper there. All right, I got the smaller capacitors on there and I have the variable resistors. It is starting to take shape. Okay, I got the five voltage regulators <coughs> installed. The first three are 317s. Uh, they actually give you the positive voltage, and the last two are 337s, which give you the negative voltage. Um, one interesting thing, no, not very interesting, but uh, I don't know what you call this, but the, the this little uh, heat sink portion of it is different on the parts that I bought than what originally came with the kit. So it's going to look a little different. Eh, shouldn't really matter though. Okay, as I was saying in my previous video, when you order these parts, there's so many different options. So I ordered these Panasonic, I think they're Panasonic aluminum electrolytic capacitors, these big ones right here. And on the bill materials, it says 50 volt low ESR type, 13 millimeter diameter. And that's pretty much what I got. The ESR, I'm not sure if these are ESR, low ESR type or not, but a website said that anything in this line is good, so I got those. But the thing is that they're really tall. They're 13 millimeter diameter, but they're the ones in the pictures are about like that tall. I don't know if that matters. I don't think it should. But I also noticed that I really didn't pay attention to the low ESR type on the smaller capacitors. I just bought whatever the cheapest ones were. So I don't know if that's going to affect anything or not. Those were pretty cheap, so I might be able to replace them if I have to. I don't know how it would show itself if it was not the correct type of capacitor. Maybe it would be more noise or something. I'm not sure. But like I said, uh, you know, I live, I learn. Well, I think I am done assembling the PCB, the power station, and this is what it's looking like. One thing that I, he mentioned on the website was, well, a couple things. One, when you install the connectors, I got the connectors in here, I actually wrote on the connectors what the different rails are before I installed it because you can't see it anymore on this side too. And I bought too many connectors. I think, I don't know where I got it in my head that I needed a couple of uh, two port connectors, but uh, I bought them as well. And also, I'm gonna have to connect these to a chassis. And I realized that it even said that you might wanna mark your chassis before you install these. So you can actually mark through these holes where you're going to have to cut or drill. But I didn't do that. I don't have a chassis, so I guess what I'll have to do is somehow put something through these holes and use that to mark the chassis. I don't think it'll be that hard. Yeah, I've given the chassis some thought, but I'm not really sure how I'm going to go about this. I could just go buy one at a hobby store and that'll probably cost me like 30 or 40 dollars or something like that which I really don't want to pay that much for a chassis I could also try to construct one out of sheet metal that'll cost me like eight dollars or so I don't know that might kind of look a little ghetto I was also considering reusing the chassis for the uh, power supply that uh, for my computer that I have that I, I might be pulling parts off so there's that. Or maybe I'll just find something in the garbage that I can use. That'd be best. But, okay, well this is assembled. 
No testing, no. I'll save that for another day. I'll go through and make sure all my uh, solders, all my soldering is good. Hopefully it is. And I've done projects in the past. Whenever there's a problem, I you know you have to go use the magnifying lens and check all your check all your solders. Make sure you're not uh, shorting any anything out. And the ones that are real close. But uh, yeah, that'll be for another day. Now, I'll uh, like I said, I'll hook it up to this Radio Shack transformer and do a smoke test, and hopefully everything's good. Okay, I decided to go ahead and test my test my power supply. There it is on a rubber mat. There's the transformer, and it is connected. And then I got my uh, my power button and my fuse holder. And we're going to check some voltages. So, the first thing we got to do is turn it on. Oh, leave my light on. Turn it on and see if it smokes. Okay, it's on. Nothing's humming, nothing's smoking. Alright. Shall we test our first voltage? stand here for this. 26.3 volts for the 48, which said um, on the website said that's about right. Awesome! Okay, how about our plus one? 16. Awesome! Our plus two? 16. Our plus minus one? Negative 16. And our negative two? Negative 16 volts. Yes, it works. <sighs> Let's just go ahead and shut this back off. All right, smoke test passed. The voltage voltages are all about what they're supposed to be for uh, for this uh, two times 12 volt transformer. Now all I have to do is get uh, a better transformer and we should be in business. Yay!